In this video, I'm going to teach you how to pass your hair follicle drug test without the use of damaging bleaches and expensive shampoos. So let's jump right to it. In order to pass your hair drug test, it's important to know the methods used by the labs as well as their capabilities and their pitfalls. When your hair is sent to the lab for testing, it goes through multiple processes to ensure the hair is not contaminated to lessen the possibility of a false positive. This is the process that most hair detox methods aim to exploit. Hair samples are put through a cleansing process which is designed to let the technician know if the hair follicle is porous or not. Follicles that are highly porous have a greater chance of being contaminated from outside sources, such as being around someone who's smoking marijuana. In order to protect the patient from false positives, drug testing centers must do their best to prove that the drugs in the hair came from ingestion. Porous hair is also more likely to have had potential drug traces washed out, which will result in a false negative. It has been documented through multiple case studies that hair that has undergone consistent cosmetic treatments are more likely to have high porosity. Cosmetic treatments include bleaching, perming, relaxing, and thermal treatments such as flat ironing. Once a sample of hair is found to be too porous, it is given a negative slash non-conclusive rating. This is why most people pass their hair follicle test. This fact is why most effective hair detox methods require that you bleach your hair multiple times. Bleaching is extremely damaging to your hair. The idea is that as long as you destroy your hair follicles to the point that they're untestable, you should be fine. In some cases, this can be true. Some employers may be okay as long as the hair sample doesn't come back positive. However, some employers, as well as probation officers, parents, workmen comp companies, etc., or whoever ordered the tests, may not be satisfied and request another hair test. This could allow for more hair to grow, causing someone to have to go through another excruciating detox regimen, causing even more damage to their hair. There's also a possibility of the lab disclosing that the hair looks as if it was intentionally damaged and encouraged the client to reorder a test. Also, let's not rule out the possibility of the hair follicle being testable and coming back positive, which is very possible. Leaving someone jobless along with weak and brittle hair to add injury to insult. You may be thinking, is there a way to pass my hair follicle test and still keep my hair in good condition? Yes. Is there a way to increase my hair's porosity without doing irreversible damage? Yes. Is there a way to do it without a lot of work? Unfortunately, no. The only way to pass a hair follicle drug test, besides total abstinence for an extended period, is to reduce the amount of the drug in your hair's cortex using multiple techniques together. These techniques are increasing porosity, Consistent washing with effective detergents, degradation of the substance, and dilution with protein. These methods, when used together and in the right order, give a person the best chance of lowering the amount of trace molecules under the cutoff point, resulting in a negative test sample. So method number one, increase porosity. This method is the most important and effective method and must be done in order for the other methods to have any effect. The hair follicle has three layers. The first layer is the cuticle, which is the outmost layer. It's made of hardened overlapping dead cells. When the hair is dry, the overlapping cells naturally open up. This allows moisture and nutrients to enter the shaft and hydrate the second layer, which is the cortex, which is made up of mainly proteins and lipids. This is where the hair's melanin is stored which gives the hair its color. Molecules like THC, COOH bond to the melanin very well. A person's hair may naturally be highly porous, which may not be ideal for everyday style, but it is great if you want to get agents to reach the cortex and remove drug molecules. If your hair is naturally medium or low porosity, then you must remove the factors that contribute to low porosity, which are moisture and buildup. In this case, you must use a degreasing agent to strip the cuticle of built up oils and hair products. A simple inexpensive product is dishwashing liquid. Not only will it remove the buildup, but it will also contribute to drying out the hair. Once you strip out the buildup, follow it up with a blow dryer. 
Take your time as the goal is to starve your hair of moisture and prompt the cuticles to open up. The drier the hair, the more porous your hair will become. This method is much safer because it can be easily reversed through a moisturizing regimen, unlike bleaching, which doesn't only open the cuticles, but it also damages the scales. I would not recommend rigorous brushing or combing while the hair is extremely dry. I also recommend the utilization of a hair bonnet when sleeping to protect the hair from breaking off. You can test the porosity of your hair by taking a single strand of your hair and placing it in a glass of water. If the hair sinks after a short amount of time, your hair is highly porous. If it takes a few minutes to sink or it doesn't sink at all, then you need to dry the hair more. If after another drying session the hair still floats, Wash with dish soap again and repeat the process until you get hair that sinks shortly after placing it in the water. Once your hair is highly porous, you can begin to break down the melanin in the hair. To do this, combine one cup of baking soda with three tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. Mix it up and apply it to your hair. If you have a lot of hair, you can make more using the same proportions. Be sure to cover all the hair thoroughly, especially the hair closest to the scalp as most tests are done in the first three inches of hair. Warning, this process will lighten your hair two to three shades per application. Leave the mask on in your hair for 30 to 60 minutes. Longer than 60 minutes at a time is not recommended. This is very effective because it breaks down the melanin that the drugs bond to. Darker hair will require more applications as darker hair contains more melanin. The hair can be dyed back to its original color. To minimize damage, I suggest using a temporary dye as not to cause more damage while the hair is in a highly porous state. It also minimizes the suspicion of tampering. Only use a permanent dye after you take the drug test and after you complete a moisturizing regimen. Method number two, consistent washing with effective detergent. You need to make a point to wash your hair three to five times a day leading up to your test date. If your test date is more than two weeks away, you may want to wait to start the regimen to avoid permanent damage. Use the following cleaning solutions on a rotating basis. 10 to 20 minutes each, 30 minutes recommended if possible. Number one, Dawn dish soap or any soap with Oxy. Number two, apple cider vinegar. Number three, clarifying shampoo. Number four, borax. Now borax has a pH value of nine which is good for degradation, but it can possibly cause a pH imbalance on the scalp. So rinse with vinegar after. And finally, aloe vera. Follow each wash with a complete drying with the blow dryer. Method number three, degradation. THC is known to degrade to CBN in the presence of UV light, be the sun or UV light bulbs, heat, a blow dryer or a flat iron, and oxygen. A good way to introduce oxygen to your hair is peroxide. CBN also further degrades in the presence of these factors also. Now, while CBN has been reported to trigger a positive drug test, the cutoff value is much higher than THC. So turning the remaining THC that didn't get washed out will help keep you under the THC cutoff, which is about a thousand times less than CBN. And remember, these processes will also be removing much of the CBN in your hair also. The last method is dilution with protein. With this method, we intend to increase the amount of protein in our hair using DIY or store-bought products, such as the DIY Whey Hair Treatment, Queen Helene's Cholesterol. Another store-bought product is It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In Plus Keratin. The goal is to overload the hair with proteins and lipids in and around the hair. What this does is it artificially dilutes the amount of a substance so that the ratio of proteins to the drug molecules is higher. For example, imagine putting a teaspoon of salt in a one ounce glass filled with water versus putting the same amount of salt in a one liter bottle filled with water. In the latter, the salt would be barely recognizable. Although some of the proteins will be washed away during the preparatory stage of the testing, adding the proteins will actually reduce the porosity of the hair, which will help retain much of the added proteins. 
It is for this reason that this be the last method used, because during the washing and degradation methods, it is essential that the hair be as porous as possible. Passing your hair follicle drug test is very possible as long as you understand how to properly open up your hair strands so that they will accept the cleansing regimen. Remember to keep your hair dry and product free, use effective detergents, introduce heat via blow dryers and flat irons, spend some time under a UV light and use peroxides to help degrade the molecules, and introduce additional protein to the hair to mask the results. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and press subscribe for more informational content. Feel free to comment below. Good luck.